Hey everybody, welcome to my video. I'm gonna do a little series here about what I do for my weekly cleaning. This first video is just gonna be showing you all the equipment I use and what I do, and then I will have future videos where I show you myself using all of those things. So I'm just gonna kinda start from left to right here and work my way through to show you what I do. I'm also pretty anal for my Red Sea Reefer tank. You can see it's, it's really clean, and I like to keep it that way. Um, and I actually enjoy the cleaning, so. I keep everything really nice. You probably don't have to do it this much, um, but if you want to keep it looking clean, kind of like mine is, um, I recommend you take good care of it. So, here we go. I, of course, have my set of towels, right? I have uh, some cleaning towels here, but I also have microfiber. I only use the microfiber towel on the uh, tank because I don't want to scratch anything. So I use this for the outside of the tank um, to clean up any smudges and stuff like that. I use the Red Sea. Uh, test kits. I test once a week now. Um, I test everything you see here. I don't really test my phosphates because they're always at zero. Um, my filtration is really good and I take good care of that and I don't overfeed. But uh, before I do any of my water changing, before I start the cleaning, I always test. So I test the calcium and alkalinity first. I use the BRS 1.1 milliliter dosing pumps um, and so I have it keyed in pretty well. But before I change the water or anything, I want to see what a week's worth has done. Because, you know, if you add corals, take away corals, you know, anything happens, you're, um, you're going to have to readjust your, your dosing. So I, I test those. I test magnesium once every few weeks. Magnesium falls really slowly. So I always pull my magnesium levels up to like 14 or 1500, and then I test a few weeks later to see how much it's fallen. Um, for the marine care test kit, I don't test that often. I mean, I test my uh, nitrate and ammonia every week. But because I do, you know, over 10% water changes every single week, um, I don't really have a problem with ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, um, any of that stuff. So, but I do test it every week just to make sure I don't want to be caught off guard. I don't want a snail to have died underneath the sand bed and having ammonia spikes. But, you know, I do really good preventative care. So it's really not a big deal for me. Um, here is the carbon that I use. I... I'm pretty... I change it weekly, which is completely ridiculous. You do not have to do it. It's expensive to do, but it keeps my water super clear, as you can see. And so I use the premium ROX 0.8. It's more expensive from BRS. Um, next time I purchase it, I'm gonna buy it in the, I think the five gallon jug they offer um, because I go through it so much. It's fantastic. I put it in my dosing pump. You can kind of see there in the background. It's a mini media reactor um, and it works absolutely fantastic. Here is my one liter uh, carafe and behind it is the bucket of RODI water. I just make sure I top off my auto top off. <clears throat> I'm actually getting my tunes auto top off um, tomorrow so I will be using this bucket so I don't have to do this as frequently. But uh, I also use my RODI water here in the back um, to adjust salinity because I'm dosing um, uh, salts every single day when I'm dosing my calcium calcium chloride so usually I have to add a little bit of RODI water and take out a little salt water okay behind here sorry this turned off I have my dirty and my clean water I use these two obviously for doing my water changes or for cleaning so my dirty water I'll do the cleaning if I use bleach um, if I use vinegar everything goes in the dirty water and the clean water is just that it's only clean water uh, in my bedroom I have uh, two 20 gallon trash cans one of them has RODI water the other one has uh, premixed salt water um, with a heater in it as well as um, a Cobalt MJ1200 power head just to kind of circulate things. So I use these. I do a little over 10% water change every single week, which is a bit much. Um, I wanted to show you too, you know, I have a Apex. And so when I do all of my testing, I go up here and I click on this little guy here. And this keeps track, if it's going to load, of all of my testing. So my alkalinity, my ammonia, so on and so forth. Because I used to use this little handy guy here, which, as you can see, was tracking all of my things, all my testing. Um, but I don't need that anymore because I use this. So, all right, moving on. My portable refractometer. I bought this from BRS. I test weekly. Again, I want to make sure... I keep my um, salinity at 1.026 or 35 parts per million. So I test it weekly and I have to adjust it just slightly and a good time to adjust it is when you're doing your water changes. Filter sock. Why do I have this out here? 
I run my uh, Reefer 170 without a filter sock um, because it helps power, uh, helps get particles into my protein skimmer. But I use this filter sock once a week and I use it once a week and before I start cleaning, I install it, right? Because what I do during my cleaning is I use, I, I blast the rocks, I blast the sand, I blast the overfill blocks, uh, over overfill box. I blast everywhere in the refugium, in the sump, and I just kick up tons of stuff. And I just don't want that swimming around for hours and hours. So I install this and I keep it in there for maybe four hours until the water gets clear again. And then I take it out, I clean it with a little bit of bleach, I let it dry, and it's good for next week. So I really recommend doing that, especially even if you're running um, like I am without a filter sock. It's good to install it for uh, the time when you're cleaning it at least. Over here is <laughs> just a piece of 16 inch tubing. I use this for a number of things, but really it is my snail turner overer. I don't want to put my hand in there very much. And I do have trochus snails and they're really good at flipping themselves over, but sometimes they just can't. So I use this to help turn them over. My net, of course, I use my net um, to remove large pieces of things that I don't want in my tank. Um, really, I don't use it very often. Then my two scrapers, I have, if you look here, a set of different scrapers I use for different things. A really soft-ended toothbrush I use most frequently. Sometimes it's not good enough to clean off algae or things. So I use the nylon, and then if that's not enough, I use the metal. I never, ever, 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 ever use the metal um, in the tank because I don't want to scratch any of the glass. So I only use this in the sump area to keep it nice and clean. Turkey baster, stainless steel from Amazon. Uh, buy one, they're awesome. I use it to blast everything to kind of keep the detritus moving, keep it flowing, I do it once a week. Make sure you rinse it, rinse everything when you're done with it with touching salt water. Some people don't do that. And then I see reviews about how, oh my God, it rusted out. Well, of course it's gonna rust out. You have to rinse it with fresh water because salt is highly corrosive. Uh, and then lastly is the flipper, right? This is amazing. I highly recommend everybody buy one. They're 40 bucks. Uh, you can get a nano size and a bigger size. Um, yes, they are ridiculously expensive, but they're worth it. Um, what this thing does is it has on one side, as you can see, it just has the felt pad here for the algae, for this, the, the, the general film, which I use. And then it has on the top, as you can see, the stainless steel for glass only. It also comes with an acrylic one, but I use this one because it's glass. And this thing will actually flip, which you'll see in a later video. Uh, it actually does flip. It takes some practice, but you can flip it from one side to the other while it's in the tank, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, the last thing I have here, which is kind of ugly and ridiculous, uh, I'm kind of cheap, so I literally just made PVC pipe, some, I think it's a half inch tubing, and um, a twist tie, and this is my water changer. I stick this whole thing into my tank, <laughs> and then I start a suction and I drain it into the bucket. Yeah, so that's basically what I do. Please stay tuned for other videos coming up in the near future where I show you each of these steps individually. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll send you out here with a little view of my tank in the morning. You kind of see how clean it is. This is as dirty as it ever gets right here. So it's pretty nice. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.